Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2022 GMC Sierra. We've been trying to get our hands on one of these for a while now, and this is a really sweet spec. We've got this beautiful cayenne red paint, the AT4 off-road package, and the Duramax turbo diesel inline six engine under the hood. For the next hour or so, we're gonna take this truck out, we're gonna toss it around on-road, off-road, tear apart the interior and really get down to talking about what makes the Sierra cool, and what makes the Sierra lame here in 2022. We've got Nathan behind the camera. Unfortunately, no Alyssa on this one. We'll have to catch her next week. But without any further ado, let's do a little walk around. Let us know if you're in the chats and we'll get to your comments. First off, the AT4 package on the Sierra 1500 gives you a factory one inch lift. So there's no other truck from the factory that gets a lift kit and i gotta say it looks pretty cool nathan and i were talking about how trucks can look good if they're just tastefully lifted but this one actually adds functionality with that lift because you get some extra ground clearance if you're gonna off-road look how much clearance there is in the wheel arches i mean i can get my full head in there yeah I mean, that's significant I mean, it stinks in here <laughs> also look at this big beefy goodyear wrangler off-road tires we'll have to put those to work a little bit this looks like it must be a five and a half foot bed. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Do you have the keys on you? I do not have the keys oh, on me. Hang on, hang on. They're right inside. Okay. You do have a little step right here. This is kind of interesting, that uh, sort of fake bit for the exhaust tips right there. Rather than going out the bottom, the exhaust tips go straight out the back. It's kind of weird. If you watch the Daily Motor Instagram reel on this, or the short drive on this, you will know. Wow. And then, just right on in. I've always liked how GM does their steps into the bed because it's not like Ford where you have to open that thing and then and then pull it out and put it back in. You just one, two. I mean, that's literally did it with no hands. You can do that with this too. Not quite. No, it's it's not. Well, kind of. It's it's sort of convoluted to do that though because you got to do that and then up. and then this too, or maybe you do that first. Let me see. Um, I don't know. Try try using the key now. This is the Multi Pro tailgate. For those of you who don't know, it's not doing it. Um, try doing it now. No. no. All right. Well, look, let's try the opposite direction. Let's do this first. There you go. Here we go. So then, if you're really going to be doing a lot of walking in and out yeah, of I your can truck, see this have like a tailgating event. Yeah. Because you could sit. Like this. That's actually pretty nice. I know. Isn't that comfortable? And then, pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if that just busted out and you fell down? Uh, GM, I think you need to put a little more thought into that. <laughs> but yeah, it's just so easy. We can get up here, and then when you're ready to get back down, it doesn't have an old man handle like the Ford does, yep. but yeah, that's pretty nifty. And just that. And it all feels pretty solid, like it's going to stay yeah the only thing you do have to be careful of is if you have a ball in here then uh you can if we're one of those people that drives it around with their hitch always in there yep all right let's move on yeah to the interior getting on in the front look at all this room for activities Ugh. these are kind of neat did you have you ever seen these nathan these little uh cubbies yeah, yeah cubbies yeah. in the seats it's kind of cool we put some gloves in there some toe straps this is the full crew cab, and you can see I've got acres of room for my knees, some handles. This GM steering wheel feels really good. Yeah, and it's not off-center like the old GM trucks. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> it might be, I don't know. Uh, honestly, some USB ports, nice matting back here, and a little center armrest. You mind getting the comments up? I guess I can get them on my phone too, yeah. All right, who do we got here in the chat today? Oh, this is not live drive, that's short. There we go. We got Mukisa, hello, Moran, hello. William Long asks, does it roll coal? <laughs> I bet if you modified it properly, it and could. And don't modify it, because that's a really terrible thing to do. <laughs> Joshua John, hello, Joy Finley, hello. And Christopher Brower, sad that this isn't a 2001 Buick LeSabre. First of all, Chris, it was a 2002, thank you very much. And second of all, for those of you who don't know, 
I considered buying a 2002 LeSabre on Copart today and ended up not buying it because it went for $725. Wow, how expensive. I know, yep. I bet you a lot of people would have tuned in for a live drive because we could have just beat the sh just crap out of that car. Yeah, that would have been so much fun. <laughs> Maybe in the future we will get a, 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 a Copart LeSabre. Uh, Gager66 asked, are the seats hard? I've heard they're somewhat stiff. Nathan they actually are, noticed that. Yeah, they, typical for GM seats, they are pretty stiff, so. And I did not predispose Nathan to that, but I've heard a lot of complaints from people that said the previous gen Sierras had more comfortable seats, but Chevy actually made these seats simpler and less padding to like save weight or something. Huh. Which is so stupid save to me in a truck. Save weight on a <laughs> off-roaded G, what? I know. What was the person at GM thinking? Yeah. No, for a while there, it was a better idea to get like a, a previous model year, like pre-new uh, generation a Sierra, rather than this new one because the old ones were just so much nicer inside. Saheed says, hello, JM. Hey, bro, what's up? What's going on? Oh, well, we got a long name there. Maricopa and uh, blah, blah, blah. Hi. Charlie, you should go for a rendezvous. Well, William, the problem is the rendezvous is more expensive and crappier. The LeSabre had an extra engine, was very comfortable, and could seat six. Um, small screen moment. Yeah, that is true. But, Chris, we weren't noticing uh, this screen really is pretty high quality. Watch, Nathan can, will, like, swipe around on it. Look how quickly it responds. And anything you click on, oh, the it just goes can. there right away. Even that that has to load up data is, is making, its, making its way there. So yes, this is not the big fancy screen, but honestly, it's pretty darn functional. Unless you want to check the weather. Oh, connection error. <laughs> anyway, yeah, music, phone, nav, yeah. seats. It's all very immediate. Also, you got heated and cooled seats in here with nice big buttons, big knobs and buttons and the whole thing. I really like that, that um, control center down there that has all the things for like stop start and stuff. And the heated steering wheel button is on, on the, the steering wheel. wheel. What a concept. I just realized you guys can't see any of that stuff because of the sunlight. Why don't we go for a little drive and then we will uh, we'll stop next time in a better lighting area. You wanna drive first? Sure. Okay, let me hop into the front. Go ahead and start it up. Listen how smooth that thing runs once it's going. I like these gauges a lot. Yeah. All engines should be in line sixes, or at least I should say all six cylinders should be in line sixes. This is a diesel though. Yeah, but it's still just so smooth. Yeah. Oh, uh, Yas, what's up, man? Nathan, where do you find the binaural mics you use in videos? They used to be sold on Amazon. I don't know if they're there anymore, but check one of the Topher's newest videos. If you look in his description, he might have a link to his microphones. Huh. Hello, Frank Ducks. Fimios, do you guys drive diesel car with manual gearbox? Do you have a diesel car with manual gearbox? No. No, I don't think we can get... I think the last one that was made was the Chevy Cruze manual diesel, but I don't, they don't yeah. make that anymore. You know what I love the most about this? Hmm. Big, Big manual column shifter. You can really show off those muscles by going, oh! Yeah. You know what else had a column shifter? That LeSabre I almost Really? <laughs> Please show the sound system. The sound is really bad. I will do a sound system test tomorrow and it'll probably be up in a few weeks. Hey, a neon. You should get one of those. A neon with this dumb hood on it. Yeah, a completely rusted out rocker panel. Honestly, not as bad as it could be at that age. Yeah. Such a torquey engine. Yeah. Like, you know, the way. So torquey, so smooth. Only thing is the ride is a bit sharp. Yes, it is. And I don't know if that's because it's the AT4 or what. Probably. J uh, Joshua John asks, how is the materials and build quality? Build quality is good. Materials is mostly good. Um, let me put it to you this way. Most of the materials are are fairly solid and fairly good. You get an F-150 Limited or a Platinum, or let's say Lariat, because this is what, what a Lariat would be around. And the mater materials are either excellent or terrible. So you're kind of just either way getting a... Um, middle of the road. Don't. Yeah, you get in a ram and even the cheap bighorn rams have nice materials. <laughs> it's up and goes, that's for sure. Yeah. 
Only got 277 horsepower, but 460 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot of torque. It's a lot of twist for a 1500. You know, same thing with the FX4 package on the F-150. This corner is decently flat because of the suspension being so tight. Yeah. The car sound is not good. Oh, you don't like the sound of this car? I mean, it is a diesel, so that might be why it sounds a little different. Thymius. Thim, Thim, Thimios says, I like the style of lever automatic transmission. Yeah, I like column shifters too. Got our auto start stop, start stop. I saved that gas. All that diesel. I drove about 15 miles yesterday to run to the store in this and got 24 miles per gallon. Wow, that's so good. I know. The transmission is so smooth. GM does such excellent transmissions. GM does so many good things. Pretty much most things nowadays are powertrains. Yeah. They're really good, except maybe in the future they may not be so good. <laughs> uh, Chevys with cylinder deactivation. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Does it say on the window sheet what the engine, oh, where the engine is made? Probably does. Let's take a look. Country of origin engine, United States, transmission, United States, final assembly point, Indiana, and 44% of the parts are from Mexico. Only 42% are from the US. So this truck is more Mexican uh, in parts than it is United States. Huh. Also, only a four, part, four star crash test rating. Yeah, so it's not very good. Half 50 is much better. If you guys want to check out the 0 to 60 of this real fast, I have it on the Daily Motor Shorts page. You can pop over there real fast and check it out. Um, it's it's a quick enough truck, but it's definitely, if you're coming from, let's say, a 6.2 or even a 5.3 GM truck, it may feel a little bit slower than you might be expecting. Yeah. Um, or especially a 5.3 EcoBoost from an F-150. Like most high torque type vehicles, it feels really quick off the line, but once you get to about 50, 60, it's just kind of average. All right, let's see how well this thing can handle. Not bad. Pretty balanced. So Moran listened to our podcast and he commented on there and also on here, I think Nathan should get a W211 E320 CDI or E550 non-airmatic instead of a Volvo. He thinks you should get a Mercedes E-Class. A Mercedes E-Class over a Volvo. <laughs> so you want me to get something that would be reliable, tough, and doesn't, or you'd rather me get something that's not reliable or tough. I think he thinks the CDI would be quite reliable. It's the, uh, the diesel. Can we, they're probably really rare and probably pretty expensive. Uh, that is a good point. You might have a little bit more trouble finding one, but uh, he did point out that it's got a really tough suspension and um, thick sidewalls. That, that would be good. I just don't know if I'd want to drive around in a Mercedes, though. That's a good point. I'd much... Volvos have a, a, a less, sh like, huh. an image that's more innocent. Yeah, and it, the image of an interesting person, I would say. William Long, from what I've... <laughs> Should we do a brake test on 0 to 60? Um, sure. Alright, we're going from 60. This is going to be comical, I bet. 3, 2, 1. Whoa! That's actually pretty <laughs> that good. Was really good. It says AVS active on the Thanks. screen. You'll have All to right. go 4 auto for your launch, or else it'll just spin. I don't know, it didn't do that when I did it yesterday. Let's do it. you in 4 auto. Oh. You can try it in 2, but it's going to spin. Wow, I'm actually really surprised it didn't I know. break traction. There's 60. There's huh. 70. Pull in here and then... William says, from what I've heard, this is the diesel to have for a half-ton truck. Actually designed from the ground up, unlike the Eco Diesel. I agree, William. This is my favorite. I've driven all three. I like the, the Eco Diesel and the Ford. Uh, that they don't make anymore, but I just, they're not as smooth and they're not as um, seamless and I don't think they'd be as reliable as this one. Uh, built in 
partnership with GM? I'm not sure. I, I could see it being though. Do, did they change anything in the interior? Eh, for this AT4 model, this seems pretty standard to what it used to be. I mean, yeah, it's this the is same. this is pretty just generic. You get the simple. Denali, you get the nice big screen. Yeah, we don't have the big fancy stuff inside. Oh yes, get the e -cl uh, diesel E class and make it roll coal. <laughs> no, <laughs> I hate. Well, I hate it when cars roll coal. Should I go over there or over here? It's up to you. Uh -huh. Let's go over here. Find yeah. a Tesla and roll coal in it. Yes. Yeah, so go through. Oh, some, roll coal on it. Very different. Go through some snow. Sure. Let's see. Can I get through here? Just two wheel drive. Oh. Hmm. I wonder who made all these round tracks. Huh. Wow, look at the color a, on that Ranger. I wonder if it was a Stinger. <laughs> that's that's Cactus Gray on a t go 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 up to that Ranger. I want to see more of it. It's cool to see one right next to a canyon. It's an extended cab, Cactus. Oh no, that's yeah, that's Cactus Gray. That looks nice. Yeah. Huh. All right. Should we do a little walk around? Sure. Let's hear how quiet this engine is when it's just sitting. We do have the seven speaker bows in here. The doors seem pretty solid. For any of you just tuning in, this is the AT4 Diesel Sierra. I think it looks really good. I like how there's not really any chrome. I just, I really like this color. This is one of my favorite car colors. It's cayenne red. It's just got like a, a hair of orange, but mostly like a dark, pretty red. Hop over onto the Daily Motor Instagram page and see how well it turned out after some color editing. Yeah. It was amazing. It popped really nice. And pretty simple seat adjustments. Nathan and I noticed that the, uh, the seat bottoms are not very large. So it's not like it doesn't go very far. Very big uh, up front. It goes all the way up to Nathan's chest, it looks like. Sai, if, uh, or S-Y, however you want me to pronounce that, if we get at least $10 in donations, we will go do some donuts. There's a little bit of snow there. I'm sure we can make that happen. Okay, I'll let you take this. You know, another thing I just realized, if you see that, put your head back a little bit, you can see in the gap the glue or something from where the screen is held onto. Very, I don't know if you can see that kind of see it. Typical GM quality. <laughs> that is a really cool Ranger. Yeah. Auto cover, nice wheels, XLT. That would be like the one to get. Huh? Yeah, that, that's a nice Canyon too. Yeah, it is. You know one thing I did notice that I'm not the biggest fan of? The brake pedal feels very springy. I don't know if you noticed that at all, but like... I noticed it felt spongy and squishy. Yeah, spongy is another good way to put it. Um, but obviously it stopped really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that it's not effective, it's just like something to get. Carbow, when they did the brake test between, it was a new Navigator, a new Escalade, and a Yukon Denali. Mm -hmm. And the GM and the Escalade stopped at like the same point, and the navigator took like four extra car lengths to stop and they were like what on earth Yeesh. well how do you feel about the mirror that has the uh, camera i like it yeah it might it takes a little bit to get used to but what other car was that on is it uh, obviously a geo well no a lot of cars have that now toyota's and, oh yeah yeah quite a few brands. whatever car it was um i got used to it and i really liked it yes yeah, so this doesn't even have no panoramic sunroof there's no sunroof at all I'll let you read those two in between SY and YAS that I've not gotten to. Um, what fuel consumption does this have? I The EPA would say on the window sticker there, I, I think it's like 20 something, and I think in normal daily day driving, you can definitely see 20 miles per gallon. I mean, we've not been getting fantastic, but we've been thrashing it. Huh. Um, Joshua John says the new Ranger is available in Australia uh, on the website before the rest of the world. Yeah, I. I, I don't get it. It's just like, yeah, I know Australia is probably a bigger market for the Ranger, but like, world, why yeah. does it have to? Um, Ooh, this is not. Stick your hand up in here. It's a very sharp. I, I don't oh know, yeah. Like it could sure. hurt if yeah. you slide your hand on it the wrong way. Um. Uh. 
how's the steering wheel? Do you like it? Um, I actually do like it. It's kind of a similar-ish design to the Toyota that uh, to Toyota wheels. It has this like um, straight, these two straight up and down portions, so you can put your hand in the middle if you want. And it feels nice too. Yeah, and it's uh, it's heated all the way around, which is very nice. Oh. Um, looks good. We'll do a horn test once we're not around more a lot of people. Uh, Nathan Salazar says, um, "What's your favorite sound system?" Probably the Volvo sound systems, Volvo Bar uh, Bowers and Wilkins. Okay, and what is your favorite, or, or no, does this one have the magnetic ride? I don't think so. I don't think it's got magnetic ride. The window sticker might say, but I don't think it does. You manually sh It's got manual shift buttons, but, oh, there we go. You gotta go down to the bell. See if it holds gears, we'll do the Moran gear test. Yep. At 5,000 RPM. So here's a question I have for all of you commenters. Why am I unable to put it into sport mode? So you see up here. I did, I tried to put it in sport mode too and could not get it. You see there's, it says drive modes, it says normal, sport, and off-road, but it's not going into sport. What do I need to do to make it go into sport? Do I need to be in L? What, what am I doing wrong? Is this a 10 speed? I think this is an 8. Check the sticker. All right. Let's see how much research we've done. Um, $64,000. It's actually pretty good. Compared to some other trucks these days, yeah. Um, and, man, it wasn't so firm. I could read the thing. Um, this is the 84 premium package. Um, it should stay on the very top of the window sticker, like up in that little, right there. Uh, 10 speed auto. Okay, so this is 10 speed. Jet black with Kalahari accents. Oranges. Break test. Off-roading, though. Off-road? Yeah. I mean, this is the AT4 off-road. Yeah. Off we, we should try and get an AT4 GMC Acadia. Do they make that? Yeah. Every GM model has an AT4 trim. Oh, yeah, GMC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got lumbar adjustment. That's nice. It's nice that they gave you power over there, too. Yep. Good old GM. Doing it right snowy off-road section. Mm -hmm. Put these uh, Goodyear Wranglers to work. Jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's throwing rooster tails up back there in dark mud. Good old two-wheel drive. Oh wow, the suspension's taking this up really well. <laughs> it's not cushy like a Toyota, but it, it is really It's not jarring at no. all. It doesn't tick off your mechanical sympathy. No, there's some really big bumps right here. Let's see how it does. Ooh. Yeah. Bad. Did well. Yeah. Oh, that's slippery. I'm full ABS. <laughs> It's nice having a little bit of extra lift. You can just kind of bound over this stuff. Let's see, are we gonna crack through any of these puddles? I guess not. Yeah, wow. Look, a Buick Park Avenue. You should get a Park Avenue charged one. Then you give up some of the reliability. It is just a, it's, it's just a, easy truck to drive. I mean, it's not like satisfying to drive, I wouldn't say, but it does kind of just float in the back. And it drifts. <laughs> wow, this is so icy. I'm literally full. 
All right, ready? Yep. That's full foot to the floor. Wow. That's how icy that is. In fact, let's get out and see how Nathan and I will do a running challenge. How icy this is. A running challenge. Oh, you got nice shoes on too. They're not grippy though. Whoa. Oh wait, the hot spot's in the truck, so we can't go too far. All right. well, let me go grab it real quick. Ugh. It's getting windier too. Are you ready? From here to that like dirty clear spot. Three, two, one, go. Oh shit. Anyway, back to the Sierra. It's a good chance to do a little walk around. I wonder if it's so slippery. You could out accelerate the truck? No, if, if I could hold on to the truck and hold it back while it tries to spin away. You could try it, but you'd probably slip. You want me to back it up to right here? Back it up to right there and I'll go and we can use. <laughs> this is probably exactly what GM uh, intended for this to be used for. Okay. Uh, and then we'll get to some of your comments, but we gotta do stupid stuff first. This is what happens when Alyssa's not around. Radius test. Not awful, really, for a big truck. A little bit. Let's forget the bet. Nice. All right. All right, I'll get to some of your comments while Nathan closes that stuff up. Uh, boy. Oh. Not That's even a chance. <laughs> that was fun. Um, I saw a meme about Sierra's rear exit exhaust that stuck in my head. They look like forklift points every time I see one. They kind of do. Yeah. It's weird. I've never seen a truck with rear exit bumper exhaust like that. Um, Jam, can you drift it? Yes, we can. Nathan says it's raining. Josh, does more wattage or more speakers in the sound system equal, equal better sound quality? No, it does not, Joshua John. I've heard much better sound from quote unquote low wattage and low speaker systems. And Nathan asks, what is your dream car? For me, it's a Murcielago. Lamborghini Murcielago. How about you, Nathan? Uh, my dream car is a Pagani Huayra. Ah, okay. My favorite car, it's a tough one. It changes all the time because so many things come out. Right. Um, I don't know right now, honestly. Between the rap, uh, first gen Raptor. First or second gen? First gen. Okay. With a 6.2? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the, the off road characteristics of the suspension. I'm just not a huge fan of the on road characteristics of it. And to be honest, you spend most of your time on road so like i'd rather bump protection to get more on road livability i just realized i'm an l1 that's why it's running like shit let you get a little camera action from here got a nice ruddedness from when we went through here before yeah well, ah back is still a little sore oh. Yeah, Nathan and I just spent 36 hours in a Toyota Tacoma driving it across the country. So we're a little uh, a little sore of the seat. 
from about Portland to Detroit. Yep. I could see someone buying the AT4 who like legitimately does work off road, like you know, does drive through two tracks, like if you worked on power lines or something, or you know that sort of thing, or if you had a lot of property out west or something, or really anywhere that you, you needed to regularly drive off road, and you just didn't want to worry about hitting anything or, or messing anything up, and you just wanted a smooth off road ride. I mean, it's, it's functional. Check the comments. Where'd you, where were you at last time? Um, let me see. Uh, I was, I see it. Um. I think the comment about the sound systems. Yep. Uh, Joshua John says, I like how in your sound system reviews where you show how you would equalize the system to sound better. Yeah, a lot of people ask for that, and I, I will, I, kind of only do that when there's something, when a system requires a particular tuning. When it sounds pretty good flat, I leave it flat, because ultimately that's how sound engineers intend it to sound. Um, uh, Nathan says, what sound system has the most bass? Probably the Chrysler systems. And JM, this is not a V8. Nope, it's an inline six, very smooth. Inline six diesel. All right, you ready to do some more off-roading? Oh boy. Try are you sure this is a good idea? Just back There's gonna be the, uh, ice shards. With the forerunner. Alright. This is a big old GMC truck. Let's shift into four high. With a very long wheelbase. A forerunner is probably much better back here. I remember that stuck truck that was stuck up to <laughs> breaking through that ice. I don't think Chris's forerunner would be able to tow this thing at all. <laughs> oh, I love having just that lift though, that height. And do we have a good trail cam? Let's see. Camera. Nice. Good resolution camera too, wow. Yeah, it's better than the 400s, that's for sure. Do we have crawl control? I don't believe so. Wait, what is no, that? yeah, that's, that's still descent control. That's still descent control. Yeah. How are we ever gonna get up hills without crawl control? Now, the downside of an AT4 is it's absolutely giant, so you can't fit through the same yeah. uh, paths as you can with something smaller, like a Jeep or a mid-sized truck like a Tacoma. Scratch this poor cayenne. Hey, anyone need some pallets? <laughs> They're just it looks like someone was burning stuff back here. Good old pallet fire. I'm sure it's not the only thing they were burning. Ugh. I mean, we've been through this section and it's been much rougher. Oh, breaking through some of that. <laughs> There's a boat back here. Yeah, that's because usually when it's not winter, that's a lake <laughs> or a pond, if you will. I wonder if the ice would be strong enough to walk across it. Walk? Tracks. Huh. It's nice off-roading with diesels because they're just so torquey and, yeah. and smooth. You just kind of do. This is where that uh, big 35 or 2500 Super Duty was submerged. Yeah. Came back here with the TRX too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the TRX fit through this. Of course, the Defender. Whoa! Go, go, go! <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't go through the big frozen pond. <laughs> We're gonna go back and just look at that. <laughs> I just immediately, I just put my foot to the floor and I was like, oh! <laughs> wonder if we should have traction control off. You think traction control would have helped us or hurt us in that case? Probably helped us. Oh, uh. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we once got stuck back here on a live drive in a Land Rover Defender. We were so submerged, the exhaust was under the water. Yeah. It sounded like a boat. Why does this time out after 10 seconds? 
That's so obnoxious. Like, if we're going slow. Yeah. There it is. Jeez, that wasn't awful. Yeah, it was. But with how wet the mud could have been. It's yeah. Huh. <laughs> Check comments real quick. We need to get together and do a photo shoot with one of the cars you test. George Green. Are you Officer George Green? Um, why 2022 SUVs and trucks are V6, like new Land Cruiser? Uh, they get a little bit better fuel coming Oh, it looks like these here. don't time out once you press it. Oh, wow, look at that. Or maybe it's because we're stopped. That's a cool angle. It's like a fake truck on it. Huh. It's not red, though. Right, that's a good point. You can see the sides of the truck that are muddy. Uh, Xavier, hey, what did I miss? Well, just some good off-roading, and what else has he missed? Um, some zero to 60 and all good stuff, classic live drive stuff. That is actually, I can't tell if that's helpful or yeah. not helpful. It's like a video game. Right. See so you what get we're... technology like that in here, but then you don't even have adaptive cruise control. Really? Yeah. You don't have adaptive cruise control? No. Nope. Oh, I gotta be kind of selective about where I go. There are definitely some big ass puddles around here. Um, I can back up over here. Would you be willing to do a little standing outside and just kind of sure. show and drive around? Well, let's wait till we get into this main field then. I could just bust through that again. Yeah. I am really happy with this suspension off-road. <laughs> Nathan pointed out earlier that it does feel large, like the way the hood's shaped and the, the front uh, area just makes it feel like you're just driving a really large, imposing type of vehicle. I'm gonna put you up on this mound. You can drive through some of those frozen puddles. Yeah, watch me bust through those too. Yeah. Take the hot spot with you. At least the mud is frozen. does look good. I love the way the new GMCs look. A lot better than the Silverados. It's heavy though, that's for sure. Which way is you gonna go? Very icy, that's for sure. Wow, you made it. That, that's not even water right there, it doesn't look like. Huh. Neat. Just a little bit of ice. Can I uh, help him? Sure. Smells hot, that's for sure. <laughs> Probably also the smell of um, mud, like getting on the hot. Yeah. Cool. Well, let us know what you'd like to know or see. We're gonna spend another 20 minutes or so, and then uh, wrap it up. We'll do some more launches if we get uh, if we get a, up to five dollar donation. We will head out and do a little outside launch. Show it from there, but yeah, I. I think the main thing with the GM trucks for me is if you like General Motors, 
whether it's Chevy, GMC, whatever, and you just, you wanna buy from them, or you want a good diesel, I feel like those are the two main reasons to buy this truck. Unless you wanted a 6.2 liter V8. Yeah, but I feel like I would rather have the, the Hemi um, in the Ram over the 6.2 in the GM. They sound different though, and the 6.2 is a lot faster. Yeah, I know, but I don't. I would rather have the nicer interior too of the yeah. Ram. So I feel like the only reason to bother getting this. I mean, I guess if you really, really want that 6.2, yeah. And I, but I mean, there have been. I've thought about both of them, and I have a lot of times. Uh, would rather have the Chevy because of the 6.2. The problem is, is the newer generation 6.2 sounds awful because of the cylinder deactivation. It doesn't sound as cool as the like 2018 and older 6.2s. Exhaust on. The that. best one to get is the 2010 6.2. Right, because that doesn't have cylinder. The, any, the, any the car wizard said that's actually like the best truck yeah, ever. Yeah, that would be a good one. Totally to reliable. But I do like this diesel motor, and if you're doing a lot of towing be good in fact we are going to do some towing with it later this week chris brower is uh picking up an ml 55 mercedes Braun. you'd be happy with that and we're going to go tow it back with this truck so we specifically requested it and we're going to see how it tows we'll also do a little winding road towing drive with it so. i do kind of like storage area but Nathan and I were commenting on how this center area is kind of wasted space yeah. compared to the Ram in the in the F-150. In the F-150, you get cool things like the McDonald's holder that flips out and a ton of storage right here. And the Ram's got a ton of storage too. This pretty much, you throw a phone right here for the wireless charger and you're kind of out of storage yeah. space. And you do also get the classic Chevy. Yeah, but you get that now in the, in the Ram too. And I think maybe the F-150 as well. Definitely at least the yeah. Ram. Well, you know one thing. You know one thing I don't like. It you pull the latch, it kind of hits against your hand really hard. Like yeah, it's not the best design. It just comes out so fast. Also, sixty-five grand, and you uh, have a manually adjusted steering column. That's a bit disappointing. This would be a, a good suspension on road if you didn't live in Michigan. <laughs> Actually, in some ways, it'd be better living in Michigan because it uh, would absorb the big old potholes you'd run up here. That's true, just a bit harsher on the more uh, 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 stuff. That is true. And I suppose one reason not to get the diesel maybe would just be if you're not a huge fan of that clatter. Because even though it's not bad, it doesn't sound as nice. Clatter as or system. emissions. Well, they're pretty, but this thing has a huge particulate system that's, inside. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. Because so the problem is, is, as they get older, with how much more strict the standards are, right. you have to replace them, and it costs so much money. That is true. I don't know if I would want a diesel for the longevity aspect, just because of all the emissions. And you got to fill it up with diesel exhaust fluid, too. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's the reason I, I wouldn't have a diesel. Yeah. Roof. It is fun, though, to just... Oh. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah, but it took it. You know, it just yeah. kind of... It just leveled it back out. What do we got? First gen ML55 or the second gen? It must be the first, yeah. right? Yeah, first gen. It's like a... I can't remember what year he said it was. William Long is out. See you on the next one. Well, it's a loud, that cold is seat. <laughs> so there's no trick in me Let's see how, how effective it is. It blows pretty quick and hard. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Anything else of note in here? I don't think so. Quieter than the uh, 2013 Fords. Yeah. You got a wall outlet, 12 volt USB and Type C. You got the whole lot right there. Mm -hmm. And then you got Type C, USB, and AUX. How many, car, how many new cars have an aux? Not many. It's probably like one in every 10 I test. A little light. No change holder. Holder. Yeah, for like quarters and stuff. Oh. Well, that change is ridiculous. Um. Jeez. What? <laughs> Your last comment. Probably regarding the cooled seats. Would you like to try? Uh, sure. Also, you know the thing I've always wondered about? 
the heck is this for? Trailer brakes. It can. It like. Um, if you have a trailer connected, it would give some resistance, and oh, you could like say how that's much. That's what I was wondering. Brake. Can, right. Right up here, it comes up how much uh, gain you want it to have. Huh. Well, like this adjusts that. Oh yeah. Well, maybe it's the output. I wonder if you can. If like this just breaks the trailer. I think really. it does. Huh. Yeah. All right. Flip flop. One nice little. Oh gosh, watch those running boards. Very dirty. Yeah, we got this cayenne red tin coat a little dirty. Yeah, there's here's those bumper uh, exhaust ports that Moran was talking about. That look like forklift holder things. Um, this sound pretty cool. Yeah, it would just the driving the diesel would just kind of be cool because like you're like ah, I've got a diesel 1500. Like I'm unique. Like whenever I see an eco diesel, I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, you know, the other thing is, is we've been doing all this goofing off and being hard on it. We've been averaging 15.6 miles per gallon. Yeah. If that was any other pickup. It'd be terrible. Yep. You know, I don't know one thing I'm noticing. Hmm. This heads up display does not work with polarized sunglasses. Um... If I take them off, it's perfectly bright and clear. If I put them on, pretty much gone that's good to know yeah that's interesting i've never had that because i've been in other cars with polarized sunglasses and never had that before hmm. shout out to the good stream quality today at least from what i can tell <laughs> it is funny to be in a car an automatic car that's like geez that cardinal almost just died um it's not that quick and you can just ring it out for so long. Mm -hmm. It's so smooth though. There's no like, ugh. Yeah. At school and then the downshift and everything. And it's just a, it's just a pleasant driving experience. It really is. That was a big pothole back there and it just kind of yeah. ate it up. Oh boy, George Green said, 21 Eco Diesel, it's the Ram. I'm gonna go around the loop one more time then go back to the garage. He said, it's been in the shop for two weeks. We just found out it needs a new turbo. Oh it's boy. It's a 2021 Ram. Typical Chrysler. I know, it stinks because, right there's one right there. The the Ram Eco Diesel drives nice, but yeah. Look at someone stopping at the roundabout. <laughs> I would not be willing to own one because of the reliability. I'm sorry to hear that, George Green. Also, he said that's where he got his name from, his uh, trailer court place. Yeah, I remember that. Cru cruises on the highway pretty well. Yeah, I mean, these are highway speeds. Very, very relaxed. A little bit of uh, pulsating whirring, but... Yeah, these tires are kind of loud, being yeah. the off-road ones. It'd be nice to try a diesel, um, just like high country, or, you know, yeah. like Denali or something. That'd be so cool. We had this engine in the Denali... Um, Yukon, and it was really nice. All right, let's take this. No one's told us how to get this into sport mode yet. By the way, your traction control's not on. Oh, do a horn test. What? What are you expecting? Uh, not a Lamborghini Mura horn. <laughs> Seriously. That does not sound tough at all. <laughs> Nathan wants a, a freight train. Well, and you know that, like, the, um, my Taurus is horn. The other, other thing is, is it doesn't rev that high. No. So you, it doesn't feel like you're thrashing it at all. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a reason why Europeans drive a lot more diesels. I mean, they're yeah. they're fairly good for just crew, daily driving type stuff situations. Yeah. Jeremy Clarkson hates them though. Really? Yeah. They don't make enough power for him. Well, he just. G wagon. Oh. G wagon. Hmm? Where? Oh yeah. What an idiot. <laughs> um. 
He says they just sound like a bucket of bullets in there. Yeah. Or as he put it once, it's being fueled by spanners. <laughs> Ron says, if you want to own a diesel for a long time, just do a DPF delete and register it in Montana. Or just register it probably in any state that doesn't do emissions. I mean, yeah. no one's going to tell in Michigan. People just take their things off and roll coal, and they don't seem to get in trouble for it. I've only seen one guy get in trouble for it because he was literally rolling coal all the way down the highway, like passing everyone, <laughs> and then this tr trooper came flying past us a little bit after and then pulled him over. Good. As, it's really as obnoxious you when people do that. It's so stupid. Right. It's against the law, too. Right. Mm, you like that song? <laughs> They're bouncing. Don't play that song too loud. We'll get demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> la, 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 We're not doing copyright, I swear. Uh, Maron said, I'll do the same thing in the F450 that Ford hasn't given me an update for yet. I don't even, ugh, I don't even know when they're gonna deliver it. That's rough, man. Could have just gotten a, a Ram 3500. What? A Marauder. Oh, yeah. So next week, we have two cool cars, the Kia K5 GT line, the 1.6 liter all-wheel drive, and a Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. That's gonna be pretty cool. Probably do the live drive on the Palisade, because I like the Palisade, and the calligraphy is gonna be really nice. So I'll be looking forward to that. Huh, so when you put it in normal, a little trailer comes on, but when you put it in off-road mode, a little, mountain comes on huh oh yeah we didn't even use off-road mode when i was off-road yeah i was thinking totally about... forgot where should we end it here or there let's go over here we're gonna end it end it we still, still got a few minutes yeah whatever the 10 just... people in the video just have to do all that just uh do some doug demiro style drive driving around in circles. <laughs> this is how Doug reviews cars. <laughs> Don't forget the camera angle on his face where he goes, wow, for how fast it was. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's up. Make us sick. Yep. People in that Mazda are probably just like, what in the world? <laughs> so what do you think? GMC Sierra in general, good car or bad car? Very good car. Uh, okay. And then diesel, still good? Very good. Just want to buy one. I would buy the GMC. I just wouldn't buy the Ram diesel. Well, the emissions for longevity. Yeah, I just delete it. <laughs> then pumping toxic fumes into the atmosphere. We pump toxic fumes in all sorts of things we do. I don't think my one truck will dramatically change the course of nature. <laughs> it's against the law, though. What are all the things we just did that are against the law within this live track? They don't harm the environment, though. Uh, cool. Well, we what will be back. What is Marketplace? Let's see. Will it even load? Oh, you can, oh, that's right. You can order a pizza from your car. Are you kidding me? No. Hit next. You have to do all this stuff. You have to create a profile, sign in and everything. But then you can literally just, like, click dominoes and... Huh. Yeah, so Doug is seriously the most overrated car reviewer. What? You are wrong. I don't know. There's definitely more overrated than Doug. Yeah. Doug what Doug has done, if I could speak, what Doug has done is he's found a formula that a lot of people will watch. And yes, he's not always right. He's not always accurate. But he and, points out all the little cool things that most people overlook. And... If you're going, if you're trying to find a specific car, yes, then it's perfect for it. Right. Well, what I was saying is he does a really good job at, at do it's, it's not for everyone. It's not supposed to be flashy. It's not supposed to be like motor trend style, you know, accurate track performance testing, all this stuff. He just is making specific entertainment videos and sometimes informative mm -hmm. for people who want, like Nathan said, very specific cars or just... Honestly, what I respect about Doug, he only does stuff that he wants to do. Yeah. He doesn't. He's not gonna do things because it's like, I gotta review this car. If he doesn't care about it, he's not gonna. He just. He's not gonna bother doing it. So yeah, I don't. I I know he's not for everyone. His voice can be kind of annoying. He's quirky, but like, 
he's genuine, and I gotta respect yeah. him. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of YouTubers out there who are not genuine. Yeah, like vehicle virgins. Right. Um, Sorry, Parker, but no. let's be honest. I don't care. <laughs> um, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Um, oh, he also um, talked about how you don't have to have the nicest camera equipment in the world to do YouTube stuff. That is true. Um, and like you, all you have to do is put out something that's interesting or funny or informative, and it'll do well. Yeah, no, I agree. Yas and Moran don't agree with us, but hey, that's fine. That's the beauty of YouTube is that it's the beauty of democracy. Right. There's so much content out there for everyone that. You can just watch what you want to watch. In fact, Chris Brower was saying that he hadn't even really heard of Doug when he found Hoovy, whereas I didn't even really know of Hoovy, Hoovy without Doug. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a complaint. Okay. Look how crappy this button is. It like, <laughs> it moves this way and that way and you can't move it around it. It just, it feels like it's moving around in this whole entire thing. There are a lot of screens you can choose from though. Yeah. I mean, you can see your brake pad life, you can see air filter life. Air filter. Tire, tire pressure. Pre Look how much the tire pressures. Yeah, diesels. But, heavy trucks have high tire yeah. pressures. Um, oil life, MPG, yeah. fuel economy, timer, follow distance. That'd be, I wonder, like, here, excuse me. I wanna go up to, I have a few minutes up. This like lamp post here. Yeah, I think it only does it if you're moving, but you're welcome to try it. Let me just try this snow thing. No, it is not doing it. Joshua John asks, have you been to Frankenmuth, Michigan? I have. I um, played in the MHSAA high school golf states in the, at the Fortress Golf Course in Frankenmuth. And our grandfather used to live there, so yep. we used to go to Frankenmuth a lot. Um, it's a cool town, really like it. Yeah, it's neat. And he also asks, are there nice roads around Traverse City or around the Great Lakes in the summer? Yes. Pretty much once you get above the lower half of the, sorry, it, once you get into the upper half of the lower peninsula, the roads are pretty neat. Cool, are you a wrap? Yep, just one more thing. So you got, you have oil fuel filter life, engine hours, transmission fluid temperature, uh, your all wheel drive and your degrees of tilt, then whatever that is, uh, then blank page. He just wants serenity. Yep. Yeah, I said, isn't there an interior refresh coming for this truck next year? They already came out with it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just the upper level trims that get an interior refresh. I think these lower ones, they're stuck with this. Cool. All right, well, thank y'all so much for coming along. I quite like this truck. I like spending time with it and it was cool to try it off off-road a bit and see that it does really live up to its its name and abilities and unlike the t the tundra you actually get tow hooks wow and they paint them red so if it's buried underneath something you can see them a little easier yeah. so thank you all so much for watching we'll be back next week with the hyundai palisade calligraphy and we'll see you on the next one we're charlie and nathan with daily motor and as always drive on